Joining us live is Associate Professor in Nuclear Engineering, Patrick Burr. Patrick, thank you very much for joining us. So let's ask the question, how much nuclear material does Iran actually have? Good afternoon. Um, yeah, so in the last estimates that we have from the International Atomic Energy Agency, we're looking at uh, about 400 kilograms or possibly a bit more of enriched uranium, and that's enriched to 60%. Uh, and that um, sounds like a large number, but it's not a large volume. And I think that's important to understand that because there's been a lot of discussion in the media of was the uranium there, had it been moved or not. 400 kilograms of uranium, especially enriched at that level, is not, it's not a very large volume, 400 kilograms of uranium. Um, to give a sense of scale, a football, if it was made of uranium, would weigh something like 35 kilograms. So you'd need 15, maybe, of those footballs to to have the full volume of nuclear of enriched uranium that Iran has. All right, so how can you actually get rid of uranium? We hear Donald Trump saying hmm. that the sites were obliterated. Talk us through how you actually you know, obliterate nuclear. That, that, that's a very good point. So uh, the bombs that have been uh, exploded in Iran will have certainly have damaged the infrastructure and, and the facilities in which the uranium, enriched uranium was, but it won't have eliminated the uranium. It will have essentially buried it and possibly damaged uh, the tools you would have used to, to manipulate it. But the uranium is still there. It might have changed its chemical form, it might have oxidized, it might have dispersed it around, but it's still there. You cannot get rid of uranium by just exploding conventional ordnance around it. In fact, the only truly effective way to get rid of nuclear material is to burn it in a reactor. That's how uh, old warheads are disposed of, is by burning them in a reactor. Anything else you do with it, uh, would be to sort of store it in ways that is hard to retrieve, but it is never impossible to retrieve unless you actually burn it in a nuclear reactor. All right, so is that concerning then if you were talking before about the 60% enriched mm. uranium? We only need to get to, what, 90% for it to be mm. nuclear uh, weaponry grade and it doesn't take much, does it, from that 60 to 90%? No, no, it certainly doesn't. So it, it certainly is a setback in the nuclear program of Iran. Uh, if they had wanted to um, continue it, uh, this certainly is a big setback because they've lost a lot of the infrastructure facilities. They may be damaged, they may be destroyed. We don't know until we have an inspection from the IAEA. But it's certainly a setback. But it, it doesn't remove all the expertise or the material that they have accumulated over the years. Um, it's also important to understand that if they had the capability, since they had the capabilities to get to 60% and even in fact to 84% as they had reached a few years ago, uh, they absolutely can get to any enrichment level they want, 99.9% .9 if they wish to. Um, I, The fact that they haven't done it is because they didn't want to for whatever reason. But having enrichment at 60% sends a very clear message to the international community because there is absolutely no uh, civil use of nuclear energy or um, whether it's for research reactors or power reactors that needs enrichment above 20%. It's true that 60% is not weapons grade, but it just points out we are, we've got the capability to do 60, so everyone understands we can do weapons grade if we wish to do so. All right. And what do you make of the comments that came out about 10 or so hours ago from the Director General of the IAEA, Rafael Grossi? He says that radiation levels in the Gulf region remain normal following the 12-day conflict that severely damaged several facilities in Iran. But he also said from a nuclear perspective that the worst nuclear safety scenario uh, was thereby avoided. And he was meaning, of course, the Iran's Bashir nuclear power plant and the Tehran hmm. research reactor. Yes, no, that, that's uh, obviously reassuring, but it's also entirely expected. We don't expect significant levels of re uh, radioactivity through the current bombing, as long as those two reactors that are operating uh, are not damaged. Um, uranium, per se, is not particularly radioactive. It's got a very uh, long half-life. It emanates very little amount of radiation. In fact, you can actually stay right next to uranium. You can handle it with your hands and not get a significant dose. Um, in order to get a significant dose from uranium, you'd have to inhale it and in significant amounts. Um, and uranium is very heavy, so it doesn't create a very volatile powder or anything like that. Um, the radioactivity concern really lies in what 
uh, in fuel that has been irradiated. So spent fuel, used fuel, nuclear waste, that's where uh, the highly radioactive material is. And that's what uh, we would be concerned if it was um, you know, uh, targeted by some attack. Uh, the current attacks only uh, damage the facilities and might have scattered some uranium locally inside the facilities. So we don't expect any radioactivity around uh, the sites or more generally in that region. Uh, and that is, of course, reassuring for the people who live there. And, and there's no change in that, I don't think, in the near future. Oh. Another thing that's perhaps uh, worth pointing out is that we don't even have any concern, and this is very important, we don't have any concern of a nuclear explosion from the nuclear material that, uranium, that Iran has. Because uh, we know both from the uh, intelligence from the US that is available to us and the International Atomic Energy Agency information that Iran did not have nuclear warheads, and in fact wasn't actually all that close to making some. Uh, that's significant because unless you have the warheads assembled and you detonate them in a particular sequence, you cannot get a nuclear explosion. Even if you have all the materials uh, available for the, the the warhead, unless it's assembled in that particular configuration and detonated in a very particular sequence, you wouldn't get a nuclear explosion. So that also should be a reassurance for people who live in, in Iran and nearby. Plenty more questions to ask you, but we've run out of time. Professor Patrick Bo, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure.